welcome to the deep dive. Today we're digging into a strategic risk assessment covering Europe, Western Russia, and the Caucasus. We're looking at October 29th through November 7th, 2025. Yeah, and our goal really is to understand the drivers behind what looks like a pretty complex setup. Complex is right. It seems the big picture is this highly dynamic, very amplified atmospheric pattern. Exactly. We're in a major transition. We had that early cold snap, and now things are shifting to, well, much milder, wetter, and definitely stormier conditions. And that's creating this huge split, this dichotomy across the continent, isn't it? It really is. A sharp division. You've got serious flooding and wind threats in one part, and then this unseasonal warmth in another. Okay, let's tackle that divide. Section one, the storms versus the fire risk. Where is the worst of the storminess looking likely? Uh, the highest confidence for severe weather is definitely across the UK, Ireland, then moving into Central Europe, the Alps, and the Western Balkans. And what are we talking about specifically? Just heavy rain? More than that. Deep, low-pressure systems are rolling in off the Atlantic. We expect severe wind, uh, intense rainfall. Some of these could easily meet named storm criteria. Wow, okay. And I gather the flooding risk isn't just from the new rain falling. No, absolutely not. That's a critical point. The ground across many of these areas is already saturated from rain earlier in the autumn. So it can't soak up much more. Precisely. Runoff will be almost immediate. It seriously amplifies the risk of coastal flooding, river flooding, what we call fluvial and surface water or pluvial flooding. The ground's just waterlogged. And in the mountains, you mentioned the Alps specifically. Is there a unique danger there? Yes, definitely. In the Alps, particularly at mid altitudes, say 1,500 to 2,000 meters, there's a really high consequence risk. It's called rain on snow. Rain on snow. Yeah. The incoming milder air raises the freezing level, so you get rain falling onto the early season snowpack that's already there. Which does what? Melts it rapidly. Exactly. It accelerates the melt incredibly quickly. This releases huge volumes of water very suddenly, triggering flash floods and uh, dangerous landslides downslope. It's a very volatile situation. Okay, so that's the west and central areas bracing for impact. But you mentioned a divide. What's happening in the southeast? Balkans? Caucasus lowlands. Complete opposite, really. A strong, persistent southerly flow is pumping unseasonably warm air right up into southeastern Europe, the Balkans, even parts of the Caucasus. So while one region floods, another bakes. Well, maybe not bakes, but it's certainly unseasonably warm. And this prolonged warmth, especially after summer, raises the wildfire risk. It cures the fuels on the ground, dries everything out, and basically extends the fire season way beyond when it would normally taper off two completely different emergencies unfolding at the same time. Let's get into section two. What's driving this? What are the engines behind this continental split? There are two main drivers working together here. First, there's a persistent low pressure trough anchored over Northern Europe. But the real fuel comes from the second driver, an anomalously warm North Atlantic Ocean. Okay, the warm Atlantic. Mm -hmm. How does that directly influence the storms hitting, say, the UK? or Central Europe? It's the fuel source. Warm water means much higher evaporation rates. Right. So the atmosphere above it gets loaded with significantly more moisture. It's like uh, supercharging the developing storms. They tap into this incredibly moist air mass. Leading to more intense rain. Exactly, more intense rainfall rates. It's a direct consequence of that extra moisture provided by the warm ocean. Is anything else playing a role? Like what about La Nina? We hear about that sometimes. There is a weak La Nina signal in the Pacific, yes. But honestly, its influence on European weather right now is pretty secondary. It can have downstream effects, but it's often overwhelmed by these more immediate regional factors like the North Atlantic temperatures and frankly, the overall global warming signal. That brings us to Section three, the climate change context. You mentioned the warming signal. Europe's warming fast, isn't it? It is. It's the fastest warming continent. Observed warming is already around 2.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That's significant. And how does that baseline shift directly impact the kind of weather we're discussing now? It fundamentally changes the storms. There's a basic physical relationship, the clausius clapeyron relation, which means a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture about 7% more for every degree Celsius of warming. So when it rains, it can rain harder. Much harder. That's the crux of it. These storms are forming in a warmer, moister baseline environment. So extreme precipitation events become more frequent and more intense. The ceiling for how much rain can fall has been raised. And you highlighted the uh, Caucasus Mountains earlier as particularly vulnerable. 
Why there specifically? Well, the Caucasus is a real hotspot for climate change impacts. We've seen significant long-term glacial retreat and permafrost thaw there. Which makes the slopes unstable. Exactly. It destabilizes the mountain slopes. So you combine that pre-existing vulnerability unstable ground with the forecast for intense moisture-laden rainfall. Yeah, you get A potentially catastrophic cascading hazard. The risk of major mud flows, debris flows, and landslides is significantly amplified. It's a dangerous combination. And briefly, what about the strategic implications? You mentioned Western Russia facing maybe different issues. Right. Along the boundary zone between the cold and warm air, places like Western Russia could see what we call high-impact transition weather. Meaning? Things like heavy wet snow, possibly changing rapidly from rain. This type of precipitation is incredibly heavy and sticky. It's notorious for bringing down power lines, damaging trees, and severely disrupting transportation and energy infrastructure. It causes major operational headaches. So wrapping this up, it's an incredibly complex picture. You have this challenge of responding to potentially severe flooding and wind in one region and maybe enhanced fire risk just a few hundred kilometers away in another. It really underscores the complexity of weather patterns in a changing climate. The key takeaway for you listening seems to be that these weather patterns, these storms hitting Europe are, as you put it, supercharged by climate change. Yeah. And it leaves you with a pretty provocative thought, I think. Yeah. So much of our critical infrastructure, our flood defenses, drainage systems, power grids, transportation networks, was designed and built for a 20th century climate. A climate that arguably doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. How ready is that infrastructure, really, for the kind of 21st century storms we're starting to see? Storms carrying unprecedented levels of moisture and intensity? That's the question we need to be asking.